Hi friends, today we're doing Unit 10, Lesson 13, Life on the Farm. We're going to start by going over the key vocabulary words you'll be hearing in today's reading. Our first word is rye, a grain that looks like wheat and is used to make flour. Our next word is barley, a grain that is used for making food. Then we have the word occasion, an event or celebration. Then we have the word advice, a suggestion about what someone should do. Then we have the term custom, which means tradition. Then we have mill, a building with machines that grind grains into flour. And our last word is obediently, behaving in a way that follows what you have been told to do. We are now going to move into today's reading. Chapter 17, Life on a Farm in the Middle Atlantic Colonies, Part 1. Primrose, come see the kittens that have just been born, yelled Patience, Primrose's sister. See, there are six of them, Patience continued as her sister appeared at her side. Primrose sat down next to Patience as she, uh, as she pointed to a spot beneath a large shrub, where the mother cat and her kittens lie. The two girls stared long and hard at the tiny creatures that looked more like little rats than kittens. There were six kittens in all, their eyes were closed and they could not walk. They lay in a heap together beside their mother. I want to keep one as my own, said Patience. Well, you can't, Primrose replied. They have to stay with their mother for at least 10 or 11 weeks. Then you'll have to ask Mama and Papa. Patience found a litter of kittens. They'll say no. They don't like us keeping animals inside the house. I'll hide it in a safe place, said Patience firmly. Where, asked Primrose quite seriously, where will you hide it? I can't think of one place that Mama and Papa wouldn't find it. In a bucket, announced Patience confidently. Do you think that a kitten will stay in a bucket all day, waiting for you to finish your chores, laughed Primrose. Do you think Mama and Papa won't notice you carrying a bucket around everywhere? Patience thought about this for a while before she replied. Then she said, the kitten will stay in the bucket if I train her to. Patience chose to ignore the second part of Primrose's question. The two girls continued to debate about whether or not it was possible to hide a kitten in their small log house without anyone noticing. Like many colonial cabins, theirs consisted of two small rooms downstairs and three very small bedrooms upstairs. Primrose and Patience shared a bedroom, as did their three brothers. Primrose tried to talk Patience out of her idea to keep a kitten for herself. Primrose and Patience lived on a farm in southern New Jersey. They and the rest of their family were originally from Sweden. They had moved to this English colony because of their uncle Sven. He had written to their father and told them about how wonderful life could be, life could have there, about the wonderful life they could have there. Uncle Sven had traveled to New Jersey from Sweden in 1699. That was exactly 30 years after the English had taken control of this region from the Dutch. Uncle Sven was now a successful wheat farmer. The girls and their family had arrived in New Jersey in 1701. Primrose and Patience lived with their father, mother, and three brothers on a 100-acre farm. On their farm, they grew wheat, rye, and barley. They kept cows, pigs, and chickens, too. Most people in the Middle Atlantic colonies lived on farms that ranged from 50 acres to 150 acres. These farms were quite spread apart, and neighbors didn't see much of each other except at the church on Sunday. Sometimes they got together for special occasions or if someone needed help. Patients and her family doing chores. The farm that the girls lived on had a house and a large barn. They had a garden where they grew vegetables, berries, and fruits. They had a small orchard, too. Their garden was fenced, as was the area where they kept their pigs. Their cows were sent out to graze in the pasture each morning and brought back into the barn each night for milking. The far <clears throat> Their farm animals were valuable, and they kept a close eye on them. After a while, the girl's older brother, Lars, found them by the shrub. Lars had been sent to look for them by their father. He sat down beside the girls and peeked at the kittens. Finally, he spoke. You two are needed in the barn. Papa wants you to lead the cows out into the pasture. Then Mama wants you to weed and water the garden. After that, she wants you to go inside and help her with the new quilt she is making. Lars found the kittens. Primrose and Patience sighed. They knew they had several hours of chores ahead of them. Next week would be even busier. It was spring cleaning week. They would have to help Mama make soap before they cleaned and swept out the whole house. Before scampering off, Patience knelt down and kissed the small pile of newborn kittens. I'll be back later, she whispered. Do you think Patience could really keep her kitten in a bucket? Patience kissed the kittens. Chapter 18, Life on a Farm in the Middle Atlantic Colonies, Part 2.
Do you remember that in the last chapter you read a story about Patience and Primrose? They found something very special under a shrub. Who could remember what it was? When you left them, they had set off to do their chores. Let's find out what happened to them. The girl's uncle had given them good advice about the Middle Atlantic colonies. These colonies offered people from Europe new opportunities as well as religious freedom. Although these were English colonies, Germans, Dutch, French, Swedish, and Irish people came to live in New York, New Jersey, Delaware, and Pennsylvania. Every day, more and more people arrived to start a new life. Colonists arrived from many different European countries. Papa often told the children stories about his trips into town. He would tell them of all the different languages he heard being spoken there. He would describe the people who came from many different parts of Europe. He would occasionally bring home strange and unusual foods he had bought from the market or the street vendors. One of their favorites was English Pop Robins. The girls looked forward to the delicious balls of batter made from flour and eggs boiled in milk. Papa would describe the styles of clothes people wore and the different customs he had heard about. Almost all of their neighbors were from different parts of Europe. Their closest neighbor was a family from Germany. In the first years of the 18th century, German families had begun to arrive in this colony. At harvest Thanksgiving time, their German neighbors cooked scrapple and brought it to their home. The boys had loved this pudding dish of meat and grain. The girls were less thrilled, but they had loved the apple strudel that followed. The girls and their family had also been invited to visit an Irish family who lived about a mile away. Mama had been amazed by how much the Irish family liked to eat butter and cream. Families from different countries ate together. It was a well-known fact that the Mid Middle Atlantic colonies produced more food than the New England colonies. The soil in the Middle Atlantic colonies was so much better for farming. For this reason, these colonies had earned the name the breadbasket of the colonies. They produced huge amounts of rye, barley, and wheat, their most important crop. Farmers sent their grain harvest to the water-powered mills across the region. At the mills, the grain was turned into flour. The flour was sold to other colonies and to people in the West Indies. It was even sold to English, merchant, English merchants who shipped it to England. The girl's, mother, the girl's mother often joked that they were helping to feed the king of England himself. A water-powered mill. The Middle Atlantic colonies were not only known for farming, Along the coast, fishermen fished and skilled craftsmen built boats and ships. Men cut down trees from the forest and turned them into lumber to be used to make boats as well as to be shipped to towns and cities in England. Because people of different faiths were free to worship as they wished, different kinds of churches were springing up throughout the Middle Atlantic colonies. There were various Christian churches, including the Lutheran church that the girls' family attended. Like the children's family, most of the Swedish settlers were Lutheran. There were Jewish temples, too. Small, one-room schoolhouses were also beginning to appear. Only boys could attend them. The girls' two older brothers went to school to learn reading, writing, and manners. When they weren't at school, Papa taught the boys how to hunt, farm, build fences, and make tools. The girls' family attended a Lutheran church. Primrose and Patience went about doing their chores. They led the cows into the pasture. The cows followed them obediently along the familiar track. After that, they weeded and watered the newly planted vegetable garden, stopping only once to drink water from the well and to put on their sunbonnets. They did not speak much as they worked. Primrose hummed to herself as she worked, though. As they neared the end of their task, Patient look, looked up and exclaimed, I know, I will hide my kitten in my pocket. That way she can come with me everywhere I go. Her name will be Midnight. Primrose glanced at her sister and sighed. There was no point disagreeing with her or even pointing out the fact that her kitten would grow into a cat. It was clear that Patience was determined to have a pet kitten. Patience and Primrose weeded the vegetable garden. When they were done with the weeding, Primrose stood up and looked toward their cabin. We had better go help Mama with the quilt. Now that it is springtime, maybe she, maybe she will make each of us a new dress, she said hopefully. I would also like some new ribbon for my hair. Patience's eyes lit up. I want a blue dress with a very large pocket, she said excitedly, and some yarn for midnight to play with. With that, the two girls ran off to find their mother. How would you feel if you had to do so many chores each day? Patience will name her kitten Midnight. You may now move on to Unit 10, Lesson 13, Google Form.